India Stoker crosses a vacant road and glances at a field of white and red flowers at the start of the film. She stopped her automobile on the road in heels. The police car behind her is empty. India has strong emotions. She claims to see and hear faraway objects better than other people. She is more cautious and alert than anyone else she knows. As a teen on the verge of adulthood, she is always discovering herself. India plays in her backyard. Her family has lots of money and land around their house. India's garden is a large, green field with many flowers. Something on her foot makes her sit down. She removes her kid's horseshoes to investigate. India uses a pine needle to pop her big toe blister. She easily squeezes the blister's contents without flinching. She's searching her yard's big, round boulders for her father's gift. She finds her birthday gift in a tree. They planned India's 18th birthday in their exquisite living room. A woman runs past a maid covering an 18 candle cake. The family received a call about an accident, so India's birthday party will have to wait. India's mother, Evelyn Stoker, is attempting to stop crying in funeral attire. India sits next to her. As the priest speaks, she stares carefully at her father's casket. India's father, Richard Stoker, died in a vehicle accident on her 18th birthday. It was a shocking catastrophe for a high-value family. India spots a suspicious figure watching the burial from afar. Nobody sees this man. India plays the piano after the funeral. Evelyn urges India to help the maid with food in the kitchen because funeral guests are arriving shortly. Evelyn tells India to be nice at their father's funeral because she knows India is rude to her. The maids are discussing Richard's kitchen disaster in gory detail. India hears them plainly and gets nervous. Mrs. McGarrick, the oldest maid, joins the conversation. Both maids stop talking and leave. People pay their respects at Richard Stoker's house. One man's voice dominates India. She follows his words without knowing why. India recognizes him at the funeral. Evelyn always talks to him practically. After seeing India, Evelyn brings her over and introduces the man as her. Uncle Charlie. India wasn't aware she had an uncle before then. India remains. She stands with her arms crossed, staring at Charlie. Evelyn is ashamed of her daughter's misbehavior, which is unlike her. India hears from afar that her mother didn't know Charlie either. Evelyn tells Charlie that Richard informed her that Charlie died. India wants to know why she likes Charlie but doesn't like him. India and Charlie meet on the stairs. Charlie regrets Richard's death. India tells Charlie it's his loss too. Though clever, he doesn't love India. He requests time at India's place. India hears Richard and Mrs. McGarrick fighting in the kitchen the next day while playing outside. Mrs. McGarrick says she did everything Richard requested. She says she has helped for a long time but is sick of him. India's plot thickens. Richard and Mrs. McGarrick's secret deal Evelyn wakes up grimy in the afternoon. She slips on a robe and walks downstairs to see Mrs. McGarrick, but she's not there. Evelyn and India complain. India is even more outraged when Evelyn proposes they have fun with Charlie because she doesn't appear sad over Richard's death. India declines, so Evelyn and Charlie drive Richard's roadster alone. India immediately realizes her mother is being too sweet to Charlie. Charlie created a restaurant-quality supper with rare red steak and elegant sides. A French Michelin-starred chef taught him this method. India and Evelyn feel nervous at supper. India questions her mom about Charlie. Evelyn says she didn't know him. She claims Charlie traveled to Europe his whole life. Evelyn leaves the dining room, unhappy with her wine. India and her uncle stop talking once she departs. India studies the wine bottle label to learn more. She can now drink alcohol at 18, but she never has. Charlie gives her his glass and the all clear. Richard introduces India to the intoxicating drink. This indicates their future friendship. Charlie drives Richard's convertible to pick up India from school every day. India walks or takes the bus every day. India opposes Charlie's friendship. Auntie Jin unexpectedly arrives. Evelyn is astonished and upset because she and Auntie Jin never got along. They think Auntie Jin is visiting, but she knows Charlie is at the Stoker house. She wants to discuss something with Evelyn. After Charlie goes, Auntie Jin talks to Evelyn about Charlie moving in with her. Evelyn becomes enraged and thinks someone is accusing her of infidelity. Evelyn tells Auntie Jin that Charlie has taken time off from Europe to be at the Stoker house when Charlie returns. 
Auntie Jin has trouble telling Charlie what she wants to know. Auntie Jin doesn't believe it. They hire a cab to drive her to a nearby hotel since they don't invite her to remain. Auntie Jin is afraid because Charlie understands her plans. She requests another hotel from the driver. She tells India to contact her at her number. India loves Auntie Jin and agrees. Auntie Jin dislikes this new hotel squalor. Because she's here, Charlie can't find her. She lost her phone, which she needs to call India. To find her phone, she dials the hotel phone booth. She's astonished to see Charlie's shape in the distance while doing this. To find her, Charlie Fane called the cab company. He hands Andy Jin her phone. He was always with him to prevent India and Andy Jin from talking. Charlie's belt removal scares Andy Jin, who cries. He hangs Andy Jin in the phone box with a belt from Richard's closet. India gets ice cream in the basement, while Charlie kills people. She's frightened by Mrs. McGarrick's frozen body in the freezer. India is confused now that Charlie's plans are clear. She's not terrified, but she must protect her mother from him. India's reaction to Charlie's truth is likewise profound. She's doing new things because she's angry and violent inside. She has always ignored school bullies. She stabs a bully in the hand with her pencil this time. Whit Taylor tells the bullies to leave before things get worse. India leaves while he talks to her. India sharpens the pencil. After sharpening a new tip, she grips the pencil like she did when she stabbed the bully, happy to remember that moment. She feels like opening her pencil case is like opening the freezer and seeing Mrs. McCarrick's corpse again. She doesn't fear Mrs. McCarrick's corpse this time. Like a moth to a light, she is more intrigued and amused. Charlie knows that India has dark traits, like his family, the Stokers. They must appear. One evening, India wakes up and hears love music from the dining room. She's watching from the doorframe. Charlie ignores her fear. Then they dance. Charlie touches Evelyn's back, and she smiles. Passionate kisses follow. India is out. She can see through the window curtains into the yard. Charlie knows India is watching, so he puts on a greater show to make her desire them. He removes Evelyn's robe after touching her breasts. The curtain gap shocks India. Charlie witnesses her flee from home. Charlie is acting wisely. He's told India everything horrible he plans to do, but she's not afraid. Instead, when C.I. shows up at the diner where India's schoolmates hang out at night, India realizes she and C.I. may desire the same things. She stops Whip Taylor from leaving on his bike to talk. India skips the diner and takes Whip to an abandoned playground in the trees. While talking, India runs farther into the woods, and Whip chases her, laughing. Whip thinks he can steal India's virginity when they eventually kiss. India goes insane and bites, whips, and bleeds her bottom lip. Whip's excited. India's insane, so he'll have wild sex with her in the woods. Now India doesn't like him and is trying to push him away. She recovers and requests to return home. Whip refuses to let her go. India punches him to defend herself. India falls when Whip slaps her in the stomach before she can leave. She yells as he removes his pants. Whip doesn't see Charlie behind him, saving India. Before Whip can remove his underwear, Charlie belts him and slams him to the ground. Charlie ties Whip's legs together with the belt from Richard's room that he used to choke Antigen. Charlie beams as India kicks Whip hard. India and Charlie drive home peacefully. India changes in her bathroom when they reach home. She strips and takes a hot shower. She touches herself for the first time while showering. Touching herself recalls what happened in the woods. We suppose that's what made India fall and land on her. Uncle Charlie whipped Richard's belt around his neck. Richard died above India after his neck snapped. She thinks about how much she loves whip being constricted by the belt while she pleases herself with her hand. She's crying from many emotions. India's past is changing rapidly. She is revealing her terrible desires. India is suffering from its secret desires. Finally, India Climax thinks about Whip's broken neck and his death while showering. After she felt better, Charlie brought Whip's body home and buried it under the big rocks. India investigates the rocks while Charlie digs Whip's grave. She contacts Andy Jin and hears her underground ringtone, confirming her suspicions. She knows Charlie killed Mrs. McGarrick, Whip, and Andy Jin. Charlie tells Icy everything. He informs her that, as a little boy, 
he killed his younger brother Jonathan by burying him in a deep pit of sand in their garden. Charlie spent 20 years in a troubled teen facility. He wrote to India from the hospital. Charlie knew India resembled him, but he didn't know how. India turned 18 while Charlie was in the hospital for 20 years. Richard picked up Charlie to bring him home for Evelyn and India's birthday party. Richard survived India's 18th birthday automobile tragedy. Charlie killed him and returned to the family. He had ridden to India his whole life and wanted to be alone with her. Evelyn unleashes her rage on India one night when she's weak. She discusses her biggest regrets and thinks she doesn't know India well. Evelyn and India are close because she can now tell that Charlie and India are bad. After talking to India, Evelyn invites Charlie to her room to chat. Before he leaves, Charlie advises India to pack. India sits and waits because she doesn't know what will happen. Evelyn fears Charlie will kill India. She claims it won't. Evelyn says she solved everything. She knows Charlie killed Richard and Uncle Jim. Charlie creeps around her. Though scared, she orders him to kill her and leave India. Evelyn thinks Charlie wants to kill India, but she doesn't know what they did. Charlie's claim that he and India live alone in the house confuses Evelyn. She believed Charlie liked her, but now she realizes he likes her. Icy kisses Evelyn to relax. He throws her on the bed and kisses her to stop fighting. India packs her bags while kissing. He flips and drops her. He threatens India to come to see him. Like Taylor in the woods, he removes his belt and chokes Evelyn. Evelyn is gagging and gasping. India approaches the room with her shooting gun instead of her bag since Charlie continues calling her. India quickly writes Charlie's name on his forehead with her revolver. The bullet penetrates the window and hits him in the head. Evelyn writhes on the floor while warm blood seeps down the walls. She stands up and sees Charlie dying. India sits up and feels his heartbeat. Charlie's blood covers half her face. Evelyn was speechless from shock. The next morning, Charlie's body was removed from the house and buried under the rocks with other victims. While Evelyn sleeps, India packs. She will live alone in New York. Garden tools are in the car. The town sheriff stops her for speeding. This sequence opened the film. India stabs the sheriff in the throat with garden shears when he approaches her car to interview her. The sheriff crawls across the road into a field. Now we can see that the white and red flowers at the beginning of the movie are really white flowers with sheriff's blood splatters. India wears her father's belt. Charlie killed everyone with this belt. India is a grown-up now and is moving to New York to live her own life without Charlie. And this is how the movie ends.